Now let's put together the concepts that we have learnt about the key derivations for both X2 handover and S1 handover into a call flow and also touch upon a little bit of this, this PDCP count uh, business whether whether the PDCP count is continued on onto the target side or not. So first we look at an X2 handover between the source E node B and a target E node B and the conditions and the starting conditions are that the KASME has been derived in the MME and we have NH1 and NCC1 whereas in the serving E node B the KE node B was provided and we had said that it had configured its NCC count next hop next hop uh, chaining count to, to zero and the mobile which is a superset of, of uh, the, the, the access to the SE node B and the MME has the KSME the KE node B and it has also set its uh, next hop uh, continue next hop chaining count to, to zero right so the, so the E node B goes ahead and configures uh, for measurements to, to the to the UE and when the UE starts getting towards the edge of the cell it provides measurements we aren't going to look into the details of the handovers but focus more on the security aspects of it and and, and just kind of look at look at the real handover part of it in uh, in passing so the source e node b based on these measurements make, makes a handover decision and decides that the mobile should be handed over to the target e node b so the ue helps in the it's a ue assisted handover always in 3gpp so it makes a handover decision and it then goes ahead on the x2 says handover request and it and in the request it provides the key that should be used with the horizontal key derivation which is based on key e node b0 that had been provided to to the mobile and to to the ue and it then goes ahead and and computes a key e node b1 based on the KE node B0 doing a horizontal frequency, sorry, horizontal key derivation. And it also provides a UE security capabilities to the target E node B. So the target E node B can decide what um, uh, encryption and uh, integrity protection algorithms it wants to be using. The NCC count is also provided to the target E node B. So the target E node B responds with a handover request ACK and it provides a a transparent container which has to be sent to the mobile and this transparent container is actually has the rrc connection reconfiguration command that is sent to the mobile it has the ncc count set to zero it also has if if the uh, if the security if the access stratum security and integrity protection algorithms are changing it also has those parameters in this rrc connection reconfiguration that is an rrc message inside this transparent container sent to the um, to the source e node b the source e node b takes that um, container it encrypts it and integrity protects it based on k e node b zero over here so this is this is based on the k e node b that it has and <clears throat> and this rrc connection reconfiguration has other parameters that helps the mobile um, tune into the target E node B plus this NCC equal to, to zero. So based on NCC equal to zero, the mobile also computes K E node B star based on K E node B. So this is a horizontal key derivation because K E node B star is coming from K E node B and not from the next hop parameter. And once it does that, it uh, the, the the handover is kind of is being set in the meantime for any of the downlink packets that comes from this from the uh, s gateway which we are showing not changing there is a forwarding tunnel that gets created and gets forwarded from the source e node b to the target e node b also during the once this handover command is set the uh, source e node b provides a sequence number sn status transfer message to the target e node b and it provides the uplink pdcp sequence number that it has last seen from the mobile and also the downlink pdcp sequence number only for those bearers that are using rlc acknowledged mode so um, 
so there are two modes for rlc one is the rlc acknowledge mode in which acknowledgement needs to be done and pdcp sequence pdcp packets are to be sent in the in the order in which the mobile is sending it to the network so for these ones the PDCP sequence numbers, uh, the uplink and downlink are sent to the target E node B in this SN status transfer. For bearers that are using the RLC unacknowledge mode, the unac mode, these the PDCP is reset to PDCP count used in the um, encryption and integrity protection algorithms are set are set to zero whereas over here the pdcp counts uh, the PD, pdcp counts are incremented in the in the target right so it is only it's only for those bearers that drbs data radio bearers um, that are rlc act that that these parameters are sent for the rrc for the signaling radio bearers the um, pdcp counts are reset in the target so there is no carrying over of the pdcp count from the source to the target because signaling radio bearers are individual signaling between the source e node b and the ue and then the signaling that the new SRBs between will be between the target E node B and the UE. So you don't you don't do retransmissions and you don't carry over the PDCP count for the signaling radio bearer one and two. All right, so so this is the part about PDCP counts during X2 handovers. So it's only for RLC acknowledge mode. And once this is so this is what's happening on the network side once the rrc connection reconfiguration message is received by the mobile it detaches from the old cell it sinks into the new cell and it has been provided enough parameters for this random access process to be actually also optimized it does a handover random access process it's already been actually given its crnti that is going to be used and and the preamble that it should be using so this is not a contention based um, random access process so Previously, we had, we had looked at it, it was a five message transfer, but right now it just becomes a three message transfer, two for the rack and then RRC connection complete message that it sends to the target E node B. And with that, the RRC is complete, <coughs> completed and set up. And the target E node B then goes ahead and does a path switch request to the MME. To part of this path switch request is also to make sure that the uh, the S gateway starts sending packets down to the target E node B. So, so the target, the S gateway doesn't know which uh, E node B the mobile has been handed over to. It provides the UE security uh, mode capabilities, the security capabilities also that it has. The MME computes the NH2 based on NH1 that it had, and the NCC was one over here. NCC is equal to two. It then goes ahead and tells the serving gateway about the downlink TEIDs, which has been provided in the path switch request so that it provides this to, to here. These are optional steps in case location needs to be reported. Uh, the serving gateway will get in touch with the, with the P gateway, otherwise it won't even do a modified pair request. And in the response, it, it, the serving gateway also provides the uplink TEID that should be used by the target E node B in case they are changing. Um, the MME goes ahead and then sends this next hop count, next hop parameter two and NCC two to the target E node B, which as we have kind of said, will be used in the next uh, intra, uh, intra target E node B handover. With this path switch request, if any TIDs had changed, that are available to the target e node b so so now we have the gtpu tunnel set both in the uplink direction and in the downlink the downlink direction was was provided by this tid that is that has been provided and once we have all of this the target e node b on using x2 tells as the serving e node b that the mobile has moved over and so the context can be released 